Okay, I think that what's going on is I uh, haven't been meeting my demographic experience indicator quota. And because I'm not on the streets right now, that sort of deferred action for the HUD budget when I did get inside, that got upped by two so that I could stay inside for a period of time. Well, now we've got some concerns about that. Am I correct? I mean, after that 26 got benchmarked in a completely different manner, that was like the absolute opposite of the HUD budget, right? <laughs> like a like very comprehensive multi-million, maybe even billion dollar plan to support people at the other end of the spectrum by a very high level investment firm, there might've been somewhat expectations that it would be different. Okay, okay, okay. What you want is for me to show you the congressman I got in my pocket, right? Is that, am I correct? You guys need me to do something that shows that like, I know how to play the game. And so I know how to work the system. And so you need me to go back to that book, except now you don't want me on out, outside. You don't want me doing this as if I'm doing some sort of duty or trying to do some sort of like nation building or statecraft. You want me to give you some options. You want to see what kind of zingers I can throw at you right now, right? So what's he got here? What's my senator? But I'm sorry, my congressman. My congressman from Illinois. What's he saying? Fallacy. Despite sensationalist stories of nuclear cooperation between Israel and South Africa, no proof has been produced to substantiate the claim. <gasps> Going all the way back to 1992. What does former congressman Paul Findlay say? What does he say? Both Israel and South Africa have refused to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Yeah. Are you excited here? Is this a more appropriate manner for your retirement to be invested? Let me keep going. As a result, their nuclear facilities have not been examined by international authorities for decades. The CIA learned as early as 1968 that Israel possessed nuclear weapons, and it was widely believed by the mid-1970s that South Africa was capable of assembling its own. Wow, you know, we don't hear nearly enough about the South African nuclear program, do we? No, there's all these other countries and their nuclear programs we're supposed to be focused on. Nothing nearly as exciting as South Africa, huh? Wow, keep going. Well, before that... South Africa was selling Israel uranium to fuel its Demona nuclear reactor. Oh my. Really? South Africa sells uranium? Are you serious? I did not know that. In fact, it was South Africa's large reserves of uranium ore that made that country a natural ally for Israel. Is that a condition of allyship? Is that what my problem is? As reporter Seymour Hirsch has commented, quote, Israel was trading its expertise in nuclear physics for uranium ore and other strategic minerals that existed in abundance in South Africa, end quote. The evidence of the Israeli-South African nuclear connection comes from a September 22, 1979 detection by a U.S. Vela satellite of the unique light signature of a nuclear explosion halfway between South Africa and Antarctica. A committee appointed by the White House concluded that the Vela sighting, quote, was probably not from a nuclear explosion, end quote. But critics since then have taken serious exception to the report and charged that it was a whitewash promoted by political considerations. The critics' case is that the committee was severely circumscribed in its work because it was given only limited information. The CIA, however, saw all the intelligence and its conclusion in 1979 was unequivocal. Quote, technical information and analysis suggest that an explosion was produced by a nuclear device detonated in the atmosphere near the Earth's surface. End quote. That was a direct quote from the CIA, by the way. Director of Central Intelligence Stansfield Turner later pointed out that no one from the White House panel had requested information from the CIA. And without that information, the panel's conclusions were, quote, absurd. End quote. Israeli South African cooperation has extended beyond nuclear weapons to missile systems to deliver them. On October 25th, 1989, NBC TV News provided an in-depth report on the Israeli South African nuclear connection. Said the, requ the report, quote, Intelligence sources tell NBC News that Jerusalem is in a full-blown partnership with Pretoria to produce a nuclear-tipped missile for South Africa. End quote. Reports said that a missile secretly launched July 5th by South Africa over a 900-mile range had been constructed by the state-owned South African conglomerate Arms Corps on the basis of Israeli technology. 
Although Israel denied the NBC reports, the Washington Post quoted unidentified U.S. officials as confirming major parts of it, specifically Israeli aid to South Africa's missile program. One U.S. official said that the ambassador in Tel Aviv and other American officials attempting to pursue the matter with Israel were bluntly told it was none of America's business. Two years later, in October 1991, U.S. intelligence determined that Israel, within the past year, had shipped key ballistic missile components to South Africa with substantial parts of U.S. technology. However, President Bush decided to waive sanctions, called for under U.S. law. Oh, no, no, no. You know how I feel about those waivers, don't you? Mm. Such sanctions could have included a prohibition on all trade with Israel. My, my, my. Well, that is from former uh, Illinois Congressman Paul Finley. Would you consider that an authoritative source for that kind of information? I mean, that's just what I opened to. I know I should probably be a little more, I don't know, strategic. <laughs> but I don't want to get accused of being strategic, especially when this is the topic, right? I mean, <laughs> I kind of feel like if somebody accused you of being strategic when it came to uh, being able to do a spot check and then that spot check identifies some sort of uh, ballistic missile situation, right? It's one of those reasons when, when you talk about like consent to proceed, it makes a big difference when you like ground it and note it appropriately, especially if you're trying to, I don't know, do some sort of uh, demographic experience check, right? Because that's what you're doing right now. Am I satisfying you? Is it just mere curiosity or are you really committed to going all the way here, right? This is on pages uh, 139 through 141 of Deliberate Deception by uh, Paul Findlay, uh, just so you know. And um, I am going to go ahead and uh, let you know, I think we've gotten the point, right? You got the point? Yeah, right? Sorry, I don't have any Hawaiian shirts left. 